In this video, we're going to be reviewing dynamics for AP Physics 1. I'm going to start with this box on the ground, and it is a smooth surface. And the box is going towards the right at constant velocity. Now I'm going to draw some forces acting on the box, and I'd like you to see if you can figure out if this is the correct force diagram uh, for this box. So let's take a look at this. The first we, force we have here is the gravitational force, which is going to be down. And on Earth, anything that has mass has a gravitational force acting on it in the down direction. And then because it's on a table, the table is pushing it up, it's got a normal force in the upward direction. Okay, And can you spot which force should not be there? So if you spotted this force right there, you're correct. So there is no forward force. So let me go ahead and redraw this again correctly. So this only has a gravitational force and a normal force. So this is a good application of Newton's first law, uh, which I want to remind you states that an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will continue moving at constant velocity if there is no external net force. So in this case, it's moving at constant velocity. So we know that there is no forces, no net force horizontally. If there was a force horizontally, a net force horizontally, then it would be accelerating. So there are two possibilities when the net force equals zero. The first possibility is called static equilibrium. And this is when the object is at rest. The second possibility is when the object is in dynamic equilibrium. In this case, the object is moving at constant velocity. So when an object is at rest, or if the object is moving at constant velocity, we know that the net force is zero. So now I'm going to draw the forces acting on a modified Atwood's machine. And I want you to tell me if you can spot the mistake that I'm making. I'm going to assume a frictionless surface and that it is accelerating. Okay, so let's take a look at this force diagram, and you'll notice that I put a little tick mark for FT and FGB, which means that I'm saying that they are the equal in amount of force. Um, did you spot the error? So the error was where I'm stating that FT is equal FGB. So let's think about that for a second. If FT and FGB are balanced, that means it can't be accelerating. But I know it is accelerating. It is accelerating because this is pulling on it. And so uh, that cannot be correct. So there, it needs to be balanced. If this is accelerating downward, then FT and FGB cannot be equal. Um, if it's downward, then the net force is going to be down. So it should be, let me go ahead and cross this out here. What it should be is FGB needs to be bigger uh, than FT. Now I like to try to analyze this using Newton's second law, which states that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So in this situation, um, what is the net force? Um, what is our system? So the answer to that question is it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for the acceleration of object B, uh, what you could do is you could make both A and B your system. I'm just going to go ahead and dot that, okay? And we can say A is equal to, so acceleration of B, and by the way, the acceleration of A will be the same because they're connected, um, would equal to the net force along this axis right here, which is the pulley, all it does, it doesn't change the force. It just uh, redirects the direction of, of motion here. So it's going to be FGB, and there's no friction. If, there's, if there were friction, we would minus friction divided by, and this real, you have to be real careful here, this mass right here is the system mass, system mass. So it's going to be the mass of A plus the mass of B, okay? So that's what you would do if you were looking for the acceleration of A, and you know the weight of B, and you also know the mass of A and the mass of B. This, however, would not tell you the tension force. Uh, to find the tension force, uh, we're going to isolate just object A. And object A horizontally has a tension force. I'm not going to worry about the normal and the gravitational force here because they're going to cancel out. Um, and it's also accelerating horizontally. So that's when we're going to focus on the horizontal motion of A here. And the acceleration of A 
which um, is equal to the acceleration of b, which we just calculated because they're connected by the string, is equal to the net force on a, which is just the tension force, uh, divided by, now you got to be real careful here. Once again, it's the mass of your system. What is your mass of your system now? It's just the mass of a. So to find ft, it's just m a, the mass of A, times the acceleration of A, which we just calculated for B, and it's going to be the same acceleration for A. So now let's apply Newton's third law to this problem. Uh, Newton's third law says that for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So in this situation, can you spot any Newton's third law forces? Now, uh, you might say, well, what about Fn and Fga, uh, these two forces seem to be equal and opposite. Um, but you need to remember that Newton's third law is um, acting on different objects. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, how about Ft and Fg? How about these two forces? Are they uh, action-reaction pairs? And the answer is no, because these two forces are, once again, acting on the same object. So the uh, one of the action reaction pairs here, not not the only one, but one of the pairs is going to be this FT. I'm going to assume a massless frictionless pulley here. Um, these two forces are action reaction forces, so they have the same magnitude, uh, but in opposite direction. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say that we have uh, here we have this is the Earth, and we have an object above the Earth. Okay. And uh, so let's go ahead and draw the action-reaction forces. And here I'm going to use what's called the um, agent-victim notation. So uh, this is the Earth, F, uh, the Earth pulling down on the object. Let's say this is a, a rock. So E R. So it's a rock. Okay. And then what's the reaction force? The reaction force is the rock pulling on the Earth. So you start with the agent. And then you, um, then next you write what the uh, victim is. Uh, in this case, it's the rock pulling the uh, the rock pulling on the earth. Now you might say this sounds kind of weird because if I have a rock and I let go of the rock, I can definitely notice an effect of the rock because it's falling down, but I don't really notice the earth moving. So we need to think about Newton's uh, second law uh, to answer this question, which says that the net force is equal to the system mass. So let's consider the rock and the earth. Uh, so we're saying here that the force is the same. So the force for both is the same. However, the mass is different. The rock has a small mass. And so it's going to have a big acceleration, while the earth has a large mass and has a really tiny acceleration. Um, so which uh, is pulling on the other with more force? The answer is equal. They both are pulling each other with the same force. However, because the rock has a much smaller mass, it's going to have a bigger effect on it. It's going to have a bigger acceleration. The Earth has a giant mass, and so it's going to have a super tiny acceleration that we can't even notice. So now I'm going to draw a force diagram for an object on an inclined plane, and I'd like you to see if you can spot my error. Okay, so I'm going to assume that this is a frictionless um, incline. Um, of course, if there's friction, then you would include friction. I'm going to assume it's frictionless. And so did you spot the error here? Uh, one of the, the difficult things students have with these type of problems is figure out whether to use sine or cosine. So let's take a, a moment to look at that. So this incline has an angle of theta. And I know this is right angle. So I mean theta plus whatever this angle here is. Let's call it alpha. They have to equal 90 degrees. And over here, this is also a right uh, a, a 90 degree angle, right angle here. So that means alpha plus this angle needs to be 90. And I know alpha plus theta is equal to 90. So I know that's theta. So now I'm going to use uh, some trig to figure out whether or not to use sine or cosine. Uh, so cosine theta is going to equal the adjacent, which is F G uh, perpendicular. I'm saying it's perpendicular to the surface divided by the hypotenuse, which is F G F G. So uh, if I rewrite this, I get F G perpendicular is equal to F G cosine cosine theta. So this is incorrect right here. This should be F G 
cosine theta. Okay, and then for the other side, uh, sine theta is equal to fg parallel. What I'm saying is that it's parallel to the surface divided by the hypotenuse, which is fg. And then so if I solve for fg parallel, that'd be fg sine theta. So this is also incorrect. So this should be fg sine theta. So what if there was some friction and it was sliding? Well, if there's some friction and sliding, then not only do you have FG, gravitational force, you also have normal force, Fn. And then if it's sliding down, let's say it's sliding down, you're also going to have some friction. And if it's moving, we call this kinetic friction. And the interesting thing about kinetic friction is that it's always equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force uh, and it's regardless of the speed, so it could go fast or slow, it's still equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. The coefficient of friction depends on the material of the surface, and the normal force depends on how hard the two surfaces are pressed against each other. So now let's take a look at static friction. So static friction occurs when an object is not moving relative to the surface that it's on, and it's less than or equal to uh, mu s times Fn. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I'm pushing this box and there's a force I'm pushing it to the, for, uh, to the right with a certain amount of force. Let's say 2 newtons. Then the friction force, static friction also has to be 2 newtons because it's not moving relative to the surface. If I'm pushing it with 4 newtons of, let's say 4 newtons of force to the right uh, and it's still not moving relative to the surface, then it's friction force is also for newtons. And so this is, gonna, it's, this is gonna continue to happen. My applied force continue to equal the static friction until it reaches a maximum static friction amount, which is mu s times Fn. So some people refer to this as the maximum static friction. Now, static friction doesn't mean that it is not moving because it can move and have static friction. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that I have two boxes. I have a box down here and I have a box up here and I am pushing the box on the bottom and so this is for sure moving to the right. Now the friction between these two surfaces right here um, is static friction because the box on the top is not moving relative to the box on the bottom. Uh, and so the friction force here, it's kind of weird, but the friction uh, from the bottom box pushing on the top box is in the forward direction static friction and it is causing the box on the top to move towards the right. So be really careful in stating that static friction um, doesn't cause an object to move. It can cause it to move but it's not going to be moving relative to the surface that it's on. Now I'd like to take a look at a situation where you're pushing two boxes together. Now when you say a problem like this and let's assume that it is accelerating understand that they're both going to have the same acceleration so that's the key with these type of problems. A will have the same acceleration as B because they're just they're moving together, right? So if you take a look at A, A is going to have a force of the hand pushing on force of the hand pushing on A, and then um, B is going to push on A, and this will be has to be a smaller force, uh, force of B on A. I'm using the agent victim notation here, so B on A, and this one I'll call the a H, the hand on. A. Now how about B? Well A is also pushing on B. A is going to push on B the same amount that B pushes on A. So I'm going to draw this here. So it's going to be F uh, B, uh, sorry A on B. Okay. And so let's say it's frictionless. And so these are going to be my forces. They're going to have the same acceleration. So this has an acceleration of uh, A and acceleration of B, but they're going to be the same. Okay, so how do we analyze this? So it helps to set the acceleration of A to the acceleration of B, okay, and then uh, we're going to use Newton's second law, law. net force uh, acceleration equals net force divided by the system mass. So I'm going to first look at this one right here. So that tells me that FH hand uh, pushing on A minus the force of B pushing on A divided by the mass of A, okay, is equal to the force of A pushing on B divided by the mass of B. So 
Oftentimes, if you can set this up, you'll be able to solve whatever you're looking for. And the key here is realizing that the acceleration of both objects are going to be the same. If they're going at constant speed, they will both have the same constant speed uh, because they are moving together.